The first two are simple, 2x2 two two determinants and 3x3 three three determinants. And by the way, the determinants are for square matrices. Okay. For a square matrix, we can determine, we can define a determinant. Now look at how we define the 2x2 two two determinant. Now look at the screen, the PDF. On the screen, you have the definition of uh, the 2x2 two two determinant or the determinant of a 2x2 two two matrix. I did not say anything wrong. The same thing. You can say a 2x2 two two determinant or you can say the determinant of a 2x2 two two matrix. The definition is on the screen. I'm going to use some particular numbers to show you to show you the meaning. The determinant of a matrix is a number. The determinant of a two by two matrix is a number. The number is is computed using that formula. Okay. So basically in the formula you multiply the two entries on the main diagonal and then you multiply the two entries on the other diagonal. The difference between the two terms is the answer. Okay. Again, the determinant of a matrix is a number. The final answer is a number. I will show you what I mean using some particular examples. Okay. Now, for example, two by two determinants. Okay. For example. So maybe for the matrix A, I give you a two by two determinant. Okay. Uh, a is a two by two matrix. So now let's say one, two, three, four. And then we use this notation to denote the determinant of the matrix A. Remember the notations. We use that notation to, to determine the uh, to denote the determinant of the matrix A. You write two bars on two sides of A. Okay, it's for the determinant of A. If you you want to include all the numbers, uh, the determinant of a matrix A, you include two bars on two sides, and then you write one, two, three, four in here. Okay, sorry, one, two, three, four. The answer to a determinant is a number if all the entries are numbers. Okay. Uh, the formula is on the PDF. The formula is on the PDF. Now look at the formula again. The formula is here. Uh, you multiply the two numbers on the main diagonal and then you uh, minus the product of two numbers on the other diagonal. Okay. In this particular case, uh, you just remember a picture like this. Okay, uh, you use a solid line to connect the numbers on the main diagonal. You use dotted line to connect the numbers on the other diagonal. Okay, you multiply one to four, so basically one times four. Okay, minus uh, the the product of two numbers on the other diagonal, minus two times three. Uh, the answer I believe is negative two. Okay. The answer is negative two. For minus six, you have negative two. That's how we compute a two by two determinant. Uh, and also, more importantly, you remember the definition, okay? And also, you remember the notation. You write two bars besides, uh, beside a matrix, okay? And then that's the notation for the determinant of a matrix A. And by the way, two names, two by two determinant. So because the determinant, uh, in terms of the entries, there are two rows and two columns. And uh, and by the way, we can only talk about we can only talk about the determinant of a square matrix. By that I mean, for any determinant, the number of rows they have to be the same as the number of columns. Easy, right? Uh, 
uh, two by two determinant. Uh, I think on the PDF I have a particular question as well, a different question. But I guess the meaning is super easy. Okay. Uh, I really do not think we need too many questions uh, to practice two by two determinants. Yet, so today we uh, at the at the end of the day we are going to to be able to define what, what we mean by any sized so determinant. 4x4, 5x5, 6x6, whatever size. Okay. But before that, now let's take a look at one other alternative definition of a 3x3 determinant. So later on, we are going to uh, give the general definition for a determinant of any size. By any size, I mean no matter how many rows, how many columns, as long as the number of rows is the same as the, the number of columns, we can, deter we can define the determinant. Uh, the definition for a 3x3 determinant or the determinant of a 3x3 matrix is on the screen. So don't worry, I will, I will tell you uh, an easier way to memorize. If you look at the formula in here, so there are six terms altogether, right? There are six terms. Three terms are associated with positive signs. And the three other terms are associated with, with negative signs. Okay. That's how we define the determinant. It's on the cross manual, unit three. You do not have to copy. Okay. But I'm going to tell you how to how to memorize. How to memorize a little trick. Now we are talking about uh, uh, three by three determinant. After that, we are going to practice a few questions about the uh, three by three determinant. Okay. Still, uh, the same as before. The way to represent the entries in the determinant is the same as before. Okay. Uh, three rows and the three columns. We use a one one to denote the number, the entry in the first row, the first column. And then a one two, so do not use commas to separate numbers. Uh, the next number I believe is a one three. I hope I'm I'm going to get it right in this time. A two one, it means the number located in the second row, the first column. And then a two two, a two three. The third row is of course a three one. A three two and a 3 3 you have the formula in the notes now I'm trying to tell you a trick how to memorize the formula okay. you copy it down and draw some lines okay. the first term actually uh, one of the terms one of the terms uh, addition and uh, is commutative. It doesn't matter uh, which one is the first, which one is the second. Okay, you do something like this. You connect the three terms on the main diagonal. Okay. Later on, you are going to see you multiply the three numbers connected. So that's one of the the six terms. Okay. I'm using solid line to connect the three numbers. So in which uh, you multiply the three numbers, the product is going to be associated with a positive sign. Okay. And then three other numbers is something like that. Okay. Connected using solid line again, you connect so these three numbers. Now I want to I want you to notice something. I want you to see something. Uh, in any term, in any in any term, there are three factors, right? There are three factors. No three factors are in the same row, the same column. Now, for instance, one of the term is a one one, a two three, a three three. 
these three numbers are all in different rows and different columns. So do you know what I mean? No two numbers are in the same row or the same column. I told you three terms already, how to remember the three terms. You just remember the picture. You Okay. And then connected using the dotted lines. There are three more terms associated with negative signs. Okay. So that's one of the terms. So later on I'm going to use the connected lines to 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 write the formula again. A little trick how to how to do the connection, how to connect the three numbers is no numbers are no numbers in the term, no factors in the term are in the same row and the same column. I think we need one more term. We need one more term. Okay. The one more term is something like that. Okay, now let's recover the formula using uh, using the connections, using using metric, using the lines. Connected by that that solid line, you have A11, A22, A33. Again, no numbers, no factors are in the same row, the same column. None of the three. No two numbers in the factor, no two factors are in the same row and the same column. I think you know what I mean. And then associate, associated with the positive sign, you have, uh, now let's do that, A21. I'm trying to, to talk about the three numbers connected using using that line. A21, A32, and A23. You multiply these three numbers, you have a term. Okay. Uh, you can also see no numbers, uh, no factors, no two factors are in the same row, the same column from the term. You check the, the number of rows. Uh, the number of rows are two, three. I think I did something wrong. I must have done something wrong. I meant a three y, right? A three y in here. Okay. You see. Uh, now let me try again. Anybody? Anybody want to tell me what I did wrong? Uh, if I, I use the numbers connected by that, I think A13, so the last factor is A13, right? Sorry. Okay, one more term associated with a positive sign. Uh, you have A31. That. A23, A12. Again, you check the number of rows, the number of columns, 3, 2, 1, 1, 3, 2. Uh, no numbers are in the same row, the same column. Okay. So these are the three terms associated with positive signs. And uh, there are three more terms associated with negative signs. Minus, now let's get the three numbers connected by that dotted line first. Okay. A13. A22 and A31. I was talking about the three numbers connected by that line. Okay, dotted line, I mean. And then minus associated, associated with a negative sign, A11, A32, A23. One three two, one two three. I think I got it right. One more, one more term, one last term. Okay, I think a two one. I'm talking about now. Now look at the mouse cursor. Okay, the three terms connected by that dotted line. Okay, 
I think A one two, A two one, A three three. Can can anybody double check if I? I think my notification is still off. Okay, thank you for telling me that. Uh, I didn't really see anything wrong. <coughs> I hope I got it right. But uh, my point is, that's the picture you want to memorize. As long as you have that picture, then the formula is easy to memorize. Okay, uh, it's really really hard to memorize the formula. Uh, yeah, probably you just remember. Uh, no two factors are in the same row, the same column. Okay, that's uh, one other way to memorize. But uh, it's much easier to picturize the formula. Okay. After that, we are going to practice a few questions uh, regarding how to compute three by three determinants. Okay. So how about we? I'll go over number three, and then you'll do number four and number five in part one. Okay. The questions are simple. You okay? Now the solution to that one one two, the first row three zero one, the second row, and then the third row is four two three. We just use the the lines. The picture I told you to compute. Okay, so by that we mean now let's remember the picture. Okay, now let's recall the picture. You connect so these three numbers. You have a a term associated with a positive sign. You you connect so these three numbers. You have a term associated with a positive sign, right? One other term associated with a positive sign, something like this. Okay. Now let's. Get the three terms associated with positive sign first. Okay, uh, one times zero and then times three plus uh, four. I think I got it. Four one one and then three two two. Right. I believe this is the curse. I really do not. I I do not have to mention. You have to multiply the numbers first. So before addition, before adding the numbers, if you have trouble with that, uh, you probably will have more trouble later. Okay. Again, we have three terms associated associated with positive signs, and then there are three more terms associated with negative signs, right? You use the dotted line to connect. So these three terms, I think you have a term associated associated with a negative sign, minus uh, two times zero and then times four. Sorry, why do I write equal? And then minus one other term associated with with the negative sign, dotted line. You will use dotted line to connect this. Uh, one three three, one times three and then times three, right? Still, you need to remember altogether there should be uh, six terms. I think Hardy told me the final answer. I think the final answer is probably right. I don't know the final answer. Okay, uh, one one two one. Okay, you multiply one and the two and the one. Okay. Final answer Hardy told me is five. Anybody want to to confirm? For whatever answer, I'm not 100% sure. Is a uh, I need one other per person to confirm. Any other person want to compute the number and the confirm the answer is five? Sure. Thank you. Cool. So the answer is five. Okay.
I remember I I turned on the the notification, but uh, still I don't I don't hear anything. Okay, so we have right that one of the questions. Okay. Uh, you see the questions are easy. Okay. I will give you a chance to do at least one more question. One more question, please. Now let's do number four. Okay. You can get started with number four and then we compare answers. Okay. So please, so take a little time. I will give you two or three minutes to get me the answer before we move on to larger determinants. Probably 17 is right. If I remember correctly, it's kind of in my memory. Uh, I need one, one other person to confirm the answer for me, please. There aren't too many tricks as long as you can remember the picture. Uh, the only trick I want to, to, rem to remind you again is that uh, no two factors in a term are in the same row, the same column. Okay. 17? It should be simple. I will put a question mark here. Okay, 17. I told you to give you two or three minutes. I think uh, I just give you one minute. You can keep on trying. You can keep on trying. So please, I need at least one other person to confirm the answer for me, please. It's probably a question in the notes. I can check it myself, I think. Negative 17. Is negative 17 right? Uh, no, sorry. It's 17. It's positive 17. Sorry, hardly. It's positive 17. Okay, thank you. 17. If you you don't have 17, it's probably you need to to do a little bit of more work to to check if uh, it's probably the formula problem. It's probably uh, the number problem. Okay. So we're at number four. Now look at number five. I don't even bother to copy it to, to PowerPoint. Now look at number five in here. Anybody want to tell me the answer right away? Now look at number five on the on the screen, on PDF. Anybody want to tell me the answer right away? One. One is right. One is right, actually. Okay. Uh, one conclusion you need to remember is that the determinant of identity matrix or unit matrix is always one. The the same thing is true for any size of, of determinant, no matter four by four, no no matter five by five. Okay, it's always true. I want to repeat: the determinant of a identity matrix is equal to one. I think it's kind of obvious, right? Any questions so far? Easy, right? If you you don't, we we'll move on to define larger determinants. The idea to define larger determinants is uh, uh, we give the definition recursively. By recursively, I mean now let's say we use 
Now, now let's say if we want to, to define a 4x4 determinant, we convert the problem to define 3x3 determinant. 3x3 determinants, I mean, okay. Uh, the problem of defining 3x3 determinants can be converted to define 2x2 two two determinants. Now let me try the other way, okay. As long as we can define 2x2 two two determinant, and then that there's a way a algorithm to define 3x3 three three determinants, okay? And uh, as long as we know how to define 3x3 three three determinants, and then we can use the definition of 3x3 three three determinants to define 4x4 four four determinants, and, uh, and, uh, and so on. That's why I call it define determinants recursively, recursively, okay? Eventually, it's possible to compute any size determinants, 3x3, 4x4, 5x5, or any size, okay? So, but before that, we need to, uh, to introduce a term. The term is called a cofactor, okay? A cofactor. The definition of the cofactor is on the screen. I'm going to copy the definition of cofactors to PowerPoint so that I can, can, I can write something on PowerPoint. For the second part of the course, you are going to see how the determinants are useful in terms of solving systems of linear equations. Okay. Again, uh, we are going to introduce a term called cofactor. Okay. The definition of the cofactors are going to be used to define larger determinants. Okay. So how about the uh, uh, How about it? we define the cofactors? I will tell you the meaning of the cofactors using some 3x3 determinants. Okay, using 3x3 determinants. Okay. So now let's say uh, you are given a determinant. Now let's say the first row consists of the numbers 1, 2, 3. The second row consists of the numbers, now let's say 2, 1, 3. The third row consists of the numbers maybe 3, 2, 1. I'm going to use that matrix to tell you the meaning of cofactors. Okay. Two things you need to memorize. You need to remember each cofactor is associated with a sign. Each cofactor is associated with a sign. A sign is denoted by negative 1 to some power. Uh, I will tell you the meaning, okay? So now let's say 91 squared, so what, what is the answer? 91 the whole thing squared? So you have 1, right? So 91, if you have uh, 91 to some even power, uh, it's the same thing as giving you a positive sign. Now let's say 91 to the power of 5 is equal to you must you multiply ninety one five times. I believe all of you guys know that you do not you really do not need a calculator. Okay, so ninety one to the power of five you have uh, the product of uh, so ninety one right ninety one. This will give you a negative sign. In general, ninety one to some even power will give you a positive sign. Ninety one to some odd power will give you a negative sign. I'm going back to the definition of a cofactor. Okay. In any cofactor, there's a sign associated with a cofactor. The sign is represented using 91 to some power. Okay. So how about we try? We try. So now let's say a uh, two-one cofactor. Two-one cofactor. Okay. For two-one cofactor, you imagine this two is for the second row, now look, now look at the cursor. This one is for the for the first column. And then you look at the determinant. 
the entry located in the second row, the first column is here, right? Now we are trying to define two one cofactor. Okay. Two one cofactor the notation is C C two one corresponding to C I J in here. I really do not want to talk about the I I, I J thing. Uh, it's probably a little bit abstract for some of you guys. Okay. Now you imagine I value is two, uh, and the J value is one. I'm talking about two one cofactor C two one. Okay. In C two one, there's always a sign, a uh, positive or negative associated with the the cofactor. The sign is is computed using is given by negative one to the power of i plus j in general, to the power of i plus j in general. You add up the two numbers, two and one, you have two two plus one. Two plus one is equal to three. So basically, in the cofactor, do we have a positive sign or negative sign associated with the cofactor? You have negative one to the power of three. You have a negative, yeah, negative sign, right? You have a negative sign. Uh, again, for two one cofactor, you have a negative sign. Uh, two one cofactor is associated with a negative sign. That's what I meant. Okay. And then uh, in the cofactor, in the cofactor, there's a sign. Okay. And also there's a lower determinant. There's a lower determinant. The size of the determinant is uh, is reduced by one. Okay. Uh, how can we get the lower determinant? Again, the two one cofactor. You imagine this two is for the second row. One is the first column. Okay. And then the location is here. Now look at the mouse cursor. The location is here, right? The lower determinant. The lower determinant is obtained is obtained by removing the second row, the first column. The location is here. You just uh, remove the row, so this number is located, and also remove the column. This number is located. And then you have a 2 by 2 determinant, right? OK. I'm trying to say 2, 1. The second row, the first column, is located here. And then you remove the second row, the first column. Sorry, I was trying to to remove that. Now let me try again. Okay, I was trying to remove that row. Okay, and then you end up with a lower determinant. The lower determinant is uh, uh, two three as in the first row. After after removing the second row, the first column, the first row, uh, you have two three right, and then the the first column, I believe you have two one, right? Now the whole thing is called a cofactor. The whole thing is called two one cofactor. Okay. Actually the cofactor eventually is going to be a number. Okay. So because a two by two determinant, the answer to a two by two determinant is a number. Actually in this particular case we want to compute the cofactor. Again the sign is negative because you have negative one to the power of three, you have you have 91. 91 times that number, okay. Uh, this 2 by 2 determinant, the answer to the 2 by 2 determinant is 2, 2 times 1, right? Minus 2 times 3, or 3 times 2, the same thing, okay. So the answer to the cofactor is a number. The number is actually uh, 4. I think the answer is 4. Two minus six, you have negative four, and then take that negative sign into account. You have four. Right? Four is a cofactor. I now I want you to to get one other cofactor. I want you to get one other cofactor. Okay. Uh, try try to get me. So please try. Try to get me the cofactor. Now let's say. Uh, C C two three. So please, now I'm looking for the cofactor C two three. I will give you two minutes to try. Okay. It took me a, a pretty long time to say it, but uh, should should not be too hard to try.
I'm going to circle the number, the entry at in the second row, the, the third column, C23. The first two is for the number of rows, the, the second number is for the number of columns. The number I circled is located in the second row, the third column. Okay. And then I want you to compute the cofactor C23. So tell me the answer. If you get the answer, write the answer on the screen, please. Write the answer in the chat, I mean. C23 is 4, so did you tell me the answer C23 is 4? Uh, 4 is probably right. I will check that very quickly, okay? So the sign is negative. The sign is negative. So you have negative 1 to the power of 2 plus 3. So the, the sign later on is going to be a negative number, okay? And then you remove uh, the second row, the third column. I think the, you end up with a 2 by 2 matrix. The 2 by 2 matrix is a 1, 2, 3, 2. I think you have four. Four is right. We got so many fours. It's okay, but uh, I think I think you got the idea. Uh, the cofactors are uh, the way we 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 use we use to reduce the size. So that we can define uh, determinants, larger sized determinants, uh, recursively, recursively. Okay. And by the way, uh, another term for the determinant, you, you, you can say the determinant is uh, the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix. Or you can say 3 by 3 determinant. Or you can say, I just remembered one other term, a determinant of order three, of order three, of order three, it means there are three rows and three columns uh, in the in the determinant uh, order. Uh, I said the order. Okay. After that, we are ready to to define n by n determinant, n by n determinant, okay. It's not in the notes, uh, it's not in on the course manual. It's not on the course manual, okay. Uh, maybe I'm going to write something in PowerPoint. Or I really do not want to make the thing too complicated. Okay, uh, so how about uh, I just show you the definition using a particular question? Okay, now for example, we just do a handout question. Okay. In the defi uh, for the handout question, now let's do question number two. In question number two, we have a four by four determinant. Using the definition of, of cofactors, we can convert the problem to uh, to computing uh, many three by three determinants. Okay, I'm going to tell you the formula use, using this particular case, uh, the definition using this particular case. Uh, after this, I will try to see if I I can give a general definition. Okay. Give me a little moment. I'm thinking if I give you the general definition first or go over the question first. Okay. Now let's go over the question first. Uh, the first thing I want you to, to remember is that to compute the determinant, you can use any row or any column. It can be proved the answer is going to be the same. You can 
expand using any row or any column, the answer is going to be the same. Okay. In general, always use a row or the column. Uh, so later on, so how about that? I will, I will, I will do that later. I will make more comments later. Okay. Uh, to make the thing a little bit simple, uh, we are going to use the first row to expand uh, the determinant. That's the term. Expand. Okay. Yeah, probably you want to use some uh, proper notations to denote to denote the numbers in the first row. Okay. The numbers in the first row, now look at the cursor. So this number should be denoted using A11, right? I'm going to use A12 to denote the second number in the first row. That's A13, that's A, A14, okay. If we are going to use the first row to expand the determinant, the formula is going to be the following. We can, again, we can use any row or any column. For this question, I'm going to use uh, so maybe two two rows or two different columns. But the formula to calculate that is is given by the following. Okay. A one one, A one one is the number located in the first row, the first column, uh, and then A one A one two is the number located in the first row, the second column, the second number in the first row. Okay, and then A a13 is here, and then a1, a14 altogether. You have four numbers in the first row. Okay, I'm trying to to tell you the formula right now. Okay, if we calculate the the determinant, the determinant using the first row. Okay, the formula is going to be the following: a11 times c11, and then plus a12 times c12. Okay, and then plus a13 times c13. And then plus a one four times c one four. Okay. I uh, uh where c one one, c one two, c one three, c one four are cofactors. I told you the uh the notation. I told you the notations, and I told you how to compute the cofactors earlier. Right. That's the formula we need to use to expand. Uh. A four by four determinant. You are going to see a one one as a number in c one one. Uh, you need to compute a three by three determinant. In c one two, you need to compute a three by three determinant, right? In c one three, you need to compute a three by three determinant. So that's what I meant by defining determinants recursively. The problem of com computing a four by four determinant is converted to Computing to calculating many three by three determinants. Okay, now let's do that together. Okay, now let's do that together. A one one is the number in here, so you have one. Now, now we are trying to, to to plug in numbers. Okay, one times one times can I use a star to denote a multiplication. One times a C one one. So do not forget signs. Okay, in C one one in C one one. There's a, a sign. The sign is negative one to the power of one plus one. And also, there's a three by three determinant. Uh, the three by three determinant is obtained by removing the first row, the first column. Okay, I think you have one three one in here. You have zero one one in the second row, and then you have one zero two in the third row. Okay. And plus, now we are working on on the second term. Okay, the second term is uh, C A A one two A one two is two, right? The number located in the the second number in the first row. Okay, which is two. Okay, and then so again, so do not forget the sign associated with a cofactor. The sign associated with the cofactor is a uh, negative one to the power of one plus two. You have a negative sign, okay, and then you remove the first row, the second column, the first row, the second column. I think you have zero three one. So watch me, please. Okay, I think you have two one one. I think you have zero zero two. 
right. I think I think I think you got the idea. Okay. Now, two more terms. Two more terms. Uh, zero is the third number in the first row. Okay. So it's zero times negative one to the power of one plus three, and then you remove the first row, the third column. Okay, now a a one four, the last number in the first row, so which is one. So do not forget the sign, okay? You have one plus four, and then you have another three by three determinant, okay? Uh z zero one three I think. Two two zero one. Zero one zero. I'm not 100% uh, confident I got uh, I copied all, all the numbers right. Uh, that's my problem. But uh, I think you got the idea. You got the idea. Okay. Uh, the idea is uh, 4 by 4 determinant can be converted to computing, to calculating 4 3 by 4, 3 by 3 determinants. We learned how to compute 3 by 3 determinants, right? And then it's possible to get the answer. Very shortly, I'm going to to give you one other way, but uh, I, I'm not going to move on. Okay. You, I told you how to compute three by three determinants. Okay. It's possible to get the answer. This is not the best way. That's why I did not, uh, I did not, uh, I did not complete the solution. But. Uh, uh, for the assignment or not the assignment right? in most cases you have quizzes for the quizzes or the midterm if you see a, a determinant like that uh, we do not always use the first row you can use any row or any column but how do you choose the, uh, the row the column so that the calculation is going to be simple I'm going to, to repeat my question in general how do we choose which row or which column we want to use to expand. So what so what's the principle to anybody want to guess how we cho how we choose a row or a column? I'm looking at the chat. Uh, yeah, uh, we choose a row has the most number of zeros. The more zeros you have the the simpler the calculation. Okay. Uh, now look at the third term, the third term in here. If you have a term uh, containing a zero, then you really do not have to compute that three by three determinant. So because zero t times any number is, is equal to zero. So that makes sense? Always choose a row containing the most number of zeros, okay, or a column, so that the calculation is going to be simple. Okay. I'm not going to to finish to finish that. Uh, I do, I do not want to to even I do not even want to use that question. But instead, I'm I'm going to use a different question. Okay. Now let's move on to question number four. Okay. I hope you got the idea. Uh, I will give you the complete solution to number four. Okay, now, so tell me a number I'm looking for, uh, which row or which column you want to use to calculate the determinant. Now look at the matrix on the screen, uh, I mean, look at the determinant on the screen. Yeah, the second row, the second row consists, uh, the second row has contains three zeros, right? That's why we use the second row, okay? Uh, if we use the second row, uh, for a question like this, I really want you to, to write down the formula first, so you have you have something to follow. You know 
what numbers you are going to plug in. Okay. And the formula, if you want to calculate the determinant using the second row, now remember how now we are going to use a a something to denote the numbers in the second row. Okay. Uh, the numbers in the second row are denoted using a two one. A two one is for the first number in the second row, and then a two two, right? And then a two three, and then a two four. Again, to compute a th four by four determinant, you select a row or a column first, okay? And then you write down the formula. The formula is always uh, if you write down all the numbers in that in that row, and then you write down all the corresponding cofactors. Cofactor. So this notation uh, corresponding to a one to the cofactor should be a two one, right? C two one. I mean, two one cofactor. And then you have C two two. C two two is for two two cofactor. And then you have C two three, two three cofactor. And then you have C two four, two four cofactor. And then you add up all the terms. That is the formula. Okay. Eventually, we just need to compute one term. So do you know what I mean? Eventually, uh, three terms, actually. The first term, the second term, the third term are going to be zeros. If you use, if you look at the question, okay, we we just need to compute. The formula will become C two three and then plus C two three. You have only one term left, right? Now we are ready to plug in numbers. Okay, uh, C A two three is negative six. I'm going to give you a complete solution to this. But if you know what's going on, you can keep on going and uh, and tell me th the final answer. Now, if you want to look at me, if you want to listen to me, you can listen to me. If you want to try, you can try, and then we compare answers. Okay. Uh, C two three. Uh, I said that many times. Do not forget the sign associated with uh, the cofactor. And then you remove that row, the that column, right? And then you have two, two, four, eight, three, nine, eight, and the one zero zero. So the problem is converted to computing or calculating a three by three determinant, right? Now look at the three by three determinant. Actually, a three by three determinant determinants can be defined in two ways. One way is to use a row or a column to expand. The other way is to use that definition. And uh, for for this three by three determinant, and yeah, probably you do not want to use the definition with uh, with many terms. If you want to keep on going using some row or some column, I I, I believe you see we can use the third row. Okay. So because the third row has two zeros, you keep on doing. You, you keep on going. Negative six times negative one, you have six. I was trying to compute the underlined part. Okay. And then for the stuff for the three by three determinant, I'm going to put everything inside inside the brackets. Okay. This time we are going to use the formula. I still want to write the formula, okay. Okay, uh, I really do, do not want to use uh, the same notation for many things, but I believe you can imagine you can use the third row to expand the three by three determinant, okay. You do something like this. Uh, this number is located in the third, third row, the, uh, the first column, so the the sign is negative one to to some power, negative one to the power of one plus three, right? Three plus one, you know, the same thing. And then you end up with a two by two determinant. The two by two determinant with uh, is four eight nine eight. 
and uh, I know you have two other terms, but the two other terms are zeros. So because because of the two zeros in the in the third row, in the three by three by three determinant, I believe if you compute that, that will give you the final answer. Anybody want to tell me the final answer? I think it's uh, it's going to be six times uh, for two by two determinant. You really do not need to reduce the size again. Uh, two by two determinant is super easy to compute, right? Uh, four times eight minus eight times nine. Anybody want to tell me the final answer? Twenty. So did it have? So did it have? Twenty four. Is twenty four right? A uh, two forty, I think two forty is sounds right. Or negative two forty, it's negative two forty. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you see, it's not hard. Already. Uh, I think many of you guys care about uh, the the quiz, the midterm, the the final exam, and so on. Uh, on the quiz or the final exam uh, or the midterm, the question is going to be is going to be something like this. Okay. I'm trying to say in the determinant, uh, there there is going to be many zeros in in some row. You need to choose a row or a column properly before you move on. Okay. Do you still still need the general definition? I will try to write down the general definition. Okay. The determinant uh, uh, of a n by n matrix. So maybe given a n by n. Matrix so maybe matrix A the determinant of, of matrix A is defined using I really do not want to use too many ideas. I think I think you got the idea. You can use any row or any column to define the determinant. I'm not going to define, give the general definition. Uh, the general definition is possible, but it's going to be too too, uh, too hard to follow. I would have to use something like a AI AI one and AI two and so on. I really too abstract. Okay. I think I think you got the idea. Again, a uh, four by four determinant can be uh, converted to computing four three by three determinants. Uh, I believe you can also imagine it's also possible to define five by five determinants. It's going to be converted to computing a uh, five four by four determinants, and each four by four determinant is going to be converted to computing four three by four three by three determinants. Okay. Uh, in general, I do not give you questions that uh, to compute that large, large determinants. But I think you got the idea. It's possible to compute a determinant of any size okay, or any order. Any questions? In this question, we use the second row. It's also possible to use any column. So how about uh, I make up a question for which it's easier to compute using some column? Okay. Another example, okay? Another example. Uh, I will just uh, use a three by three determinant. Okay. 
So now let's say if you have a 3x3 three three determinant, so now let's say 2, 2, 1, 3, now let's say uh, 0, 0, 1, and then you have, now let's say, 1, 1, 2. I do not want to make the numbers too complicated, but uh, if this is the determinant I want you to compute, again, it's possible to use the formula consisting of uh, many terms, so six terms. But uh, it's easier if uh, you notice there's a row cons containing many zeros. I think you see I want to use the second column. Okay, if we use the second column, the formula will become uh, a a two one. Sorry, a one two. A one two is the number located in the first row, the second column. Okay. This number is the number located in the second row, the second column. It would be a two two, and then you have a a three two. If you want to to compute the determinant using the second row, the formula will become a one two times c one two, whatever entry in here, you multiply this number by the corresponding cofactor. Okay, that's the number for computing the, uh, uh, the determinant using the second row, right? I mean the second column. Okay, now the formula, you, you see the first two terms are going to be zeros because of, uh, because a12, a22 are zeros. We have, uh, we only, we only have to compute one, one term, a32 and then times c32. I believe now you know how, how to compute that. a32 is one, one times 91 to some power, 91 to the power of three plus two. And then, the determinant you need after removing that row, that column, you do not have to cross. Okay, you, you just keep it the line that you imaginary. Okay. The first row is two one. The second row is uh, uh, is one one. Okay. Final answer. I think you have ninety one times two times one minus one times one. I think the final answer is 91, is that right? So correct me if you see see something different. Uh, so but uh, uh, my point, my point using that question, the point I'm trying to make is that it's also possible to use any columns. Uh, if you see any column has many zeros. Okay. And then how determinants are, are useful. We are going to make some connections uh, to talk about the the Kramer's rule. The Kramer's rule. Okay. Again, it's uh, on the course manual. You do not have to copy. You can take a picture if you want. But I'm going to use a particular question to to show you the meaning. I'm going to use a simple, simple question to show you the meaning, okay. The Kramer's rule applies to the system in which there are the same number of equations and unknowns. For this system, there are two equations and two unknowns, right? This is the case you can apply the Kramer's rule. You can use the Kramer's rule. I guess I have to switch the screens.
if it's a real face-to-face -face class, uh, that would be a hard copy I gave you. Okay. The PowerPoint is going to be would be my whiteboard. We'll talk about this. Okay. We'll talk about this. How about I will give you the full question. I will give you the the whole question. Okay. The question is here. We are going to do to do the whole question. Probably the same system. So that you have a complete solution to to the whole thing. In the statements, in the statement of the cre the Kramer's rule, so there's there are two parts. Okay, one part is to use the determinant of uh, matrix of coefficients to determine if the system has a unique solution. If the system has a unique solution, then we have a formula to get the unique solution. I will tell you the meanings one by one. Okay. the solution I divide the whole thing into two parts I will keep the notations the same as the notations in the statement of the Kramer's rule I use A to denote the matrix of coefficients. Okay. A is a two by two matrix. It's uh, the matrix of coefficients without in do not include do not include the constant terms. Okay. Uh, I think the first row consists of one ninety one. The second row is one one. That's a simple, simple question showing you. I believe you can even guess the the solution, but uh, I'm trying to use a simple system to show you the meaning, and then we are going to use the uh, the Kramer's rule to do some more complicated questions. So that's the idea. Okay. The first thing we do is to determine if uh, the system has a unique solution or, or not. To achieve that, we compute the determinant of A. The determinant of A, all you need is to compute a 2 by 2 determinant. Uh, so do not forget to use proper notations. If we are talking about a matrix, you use round brackets or square brackets. Square brackets are okay. Uh, I think I have been using the round brackets. So how about for this one, I'm going to use square brackets. Probably square brackets are more commonly used notations. I just prefer round in some cases. Using square brackets uh, to denote a matrix. Using two bars to denote the determinant. Okay. We are trying to compute the determinant. Uh, the determinant is simple to compute. I think uh, the answer to the determinant is 2. Okay. Uh, you compute 1 times 1 minus uh, 1 times 91. The answer is 2, right? Now remember, for the system, the determinant is 2. I will switch to the Kramer's rule. Okay, A is the determinant. Uh, A is the matrix of, of coefficients. If you write two bars, it means the determinant. Now answer my question, okay? Does the system have a unique solution? Does the system have a unique solution? Yes, the system has a unique solution. All you need is to check 
is if the determinant of matrix of coefficients is not equal to zero, it's a non-zero number. That is the case. The determinant is is two, which is not zero, right? Which is not zero. Now let's recall by solving a system, you need to answer two questions: how many solutions to the system, and uh, what is the solution, or what are the solutions? Okay. After convincing yourself the determinant of the matrix of coefficients is not equal to zero, what do what do you want to write? I really do not want to write so many souls. Can I write hence? Hence, the system has a unique solution. By that we mean one and only one solution. Okay, a unique solution. It means one and only one solution. Moreover, the Kramer's rule will can give you the solution. Now, according. I was trying to write according to. I do not have to write this. The whole thing is about the Kramer's rule. Okay. Uh, after convincing yourself the system has a unique solution, now now look at the Kramer's rule again. Now look at the the Kramer's rule again. Okay. The the unique solution is given by by that formula. I'm I'm telling you the the meaning of the formula. Okay. Uh, you have two unknowns, so you have x1 and x2. Okay. x1 in the formula, the symbolic notation is on denominator. You have the de determinant of a, the determinant the determinant of the matri mat matrix of coefficients. The denominator is going to be two. On top, you have a1, the determinant of a1. I will tell you the meaning of the determinant of, of a1 very shortly. Okay. Uh, for the solution, you are looking for two two numbers. the The value of x two. The denominator is the determinant of a, the determinant of matrix of coefficients. On the numerator, you have the determinant, the determinant of a two. Okay. Now, all you need to know is what is the meaning of a one. What is the, the meaning of a two? Okay. So how about uh, we just we just keep on going? I'm keep on going to compute x1. I'm telling you the meaning of a, uh, the numerator and the denominator. Okay, the denominator is simple. Uh, the matrix of coefficients, so which is 191, right? And then uh, where is it? 11. One, one. Okay, now concentrate a little bit of the new thing. Uh, the meaning of the determinant of a one. So what is a one? To get a one, you keep the second column. Now concentrate. Now the new thing. Okay, to get a one, you keep the second column. You replace the first column. You replace the first column with the constant terms. The constant terms uh, in column. Zero two, right? To get the determinant of a one, you replace the first column with the constant terms. By that we mean now the first column becomes zero two, and uh, for x two, I will keep on going too. Okay, uh, now now I guess you know the meaning. Okay, uh, the denomin denominator is the same thing. Uh, the Determinant of matrix of coefficients, one ninety one, one one, right? And then the numerator, the numerator, 
the determinant determinant of A2. So this time you replace the second column in, in A. Okay. The second column becomes 0, 2. The first column is is not changed, it's 1, 1. Again, replace the column. Okay. And then we keep on going to compute the answer. We try to get the answer. The denominator is 2, right? Anybody want to tell me the numerator? The numerator, please. 0 minus 1, minus 2 times 91. I think the, the numerator is 2. Okay. If we keep on going with the x2, the denominator is 2. The numerator, I, I believe it's easy to see the numerator is also 2. Eventually, x1 value is 1, x2 value is 1. That is the solution, right? Actually, the Kramer's rule, the Kramer's rule is true for any for any linear system. No matter how many equations, no matter how many unknowns, as long as the number of equations is the same as the number of unknowns, the the Kramer's rule, the Kramer's rule is. It's always true. Okay, I will show you that screen. The screen is okay. Now look at the statement in a system uh, with n linear equations and n unknowns. N could be two. N could be three. Okay. N could be five. N could be anything. Okay. Uh, to solve the system, the first question you have to an to, to answer is uh, if the system has a unique solution. To determine that, you compute the determinant of matrix of coefficients. Okay. If the determinant of matrix of coefficients is not equal to zero, and then you can say the system has a unique solution. And by the way, the formula is, is also true for the case the system has a unique solution. Uh, if you replace i with 1, uh, a1 is the matrix obtained by from A by replacing the first column with B. B is the column matrix determined by the constant terms. Any questions about the statement? If, if, it, if it's not equal to a, a unique solution, we just use uh, the regular formula to find it out, correct? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, if uh, it's not zero, then actually, then the case is the system has uh, does not have a unique solution. It's either the case the system has no solutions, or the case the system has many solutions. Uh, then you you have to do the row row reduction to put the matrix into REF. So this will the formula will not apply. Uh, I probably don't have time to go over a more complicated question, but uh, uh, I will go over one other question. So without do, uh, without performing many calculations, so because you know how to compute three by three determinants already. Okay. Now look at the question on the screen at the bottom of the PDF. If I want you to use the Kramer's rule to solve uh, a system with three equations and the three unknowns, three unknowns are x1, x2, and x3, right? It's uh, the same thing. I told you the Kramer's rule is true for any system, no matter how many, as long as the number of equations is the same as the number of unknowns. Uh, what we what you do is to identify A. A is the matrix of coefficients, right? That's probably the only thing you need to identify. I wrote X, and you do not have to identify X. Actually. Probably you also want to identify B. B is the column determined by the constant terms. Okay. Then what you do is to compute the determinant 
of matrix of coefficients. In this case, the determinant of a is equal to 21. Mention this number is not equal to zero. So the system has a unique solution, right? And then we are looking for three numbers for a unique solution. And the value of x1, a value of x2, the value of x3, right? To get the three numbers, uh, you need, you'll have to compute a1. Now let's recall how to form a1, okay? a1, the matrix a1, to get the matrix a1, you replace the first column of a with the, the constant terms. 1, 0, 0, right? Two other columns are the same. So likewise, you can get uh, the de determinant of A2, A3, and so on. Uh, trust me, my numbers are right. I have been using the same thing for too many years. And then you plug in the, the numbers into the formulas, okay? And then you have, uh, you have, you can get the unique solution.